We are instructed by Jesus not to fear wars and rumors of wars. It is scary to think about the possibility that the whole world is headed into collision, and yet I have a strange peace in my own heart with this aspect. It was written in the perfect word of God. It is prophesied that war will come to pass. We now see 120 nations preparing for a head-on collision. Countries all over the world of all different sizes ready their intercontinental ballistic missiles, their air forces and their navies, their nuclear arsenals. Countries are preparing, but where will the first strikes break out? There are three possible scenarios for potential outbreak of World War III. I believe any one of these scenarios could pan out based on available data from the region showing troop movements on the ground and exercises that are happening right now. Two of the scenarios begin in the Middle East, while one of the scenarios starts in Asia. According to the website Deagle.com, population decreases will begin in many, many nations throughout the world, and specifically Western nations, starting in 2016 and continuing through 2025. Some of these population reductions are so significant that it begs the question, who is going to be the hardest hit by this war that is coming? From the data on Deagle.com, it appears that the United States, Germany, England, Australia, Canada, and some of the other Western nations will be some of the hardest hit nations in the entire world from this event. However, according to Deagle.com, there will be many nations in the Middle East who will also be hit with population reduction, including countries like Libya and Israel. The first scenario is based on Saudi Arabia's Thunder of the North. This is a coalition of predominantly Sunni Muslim countries that has come together with a front exceeding 350,000 troops operating sophisticated ground, air, and sea campaigns. They have amassed a coalition in the northern part of Saudi Arabia. This coalition is led by the Saudis, who have bought billions of dollars in weaponry from the United States. Many of the other countries in the coalition have also bought billions of dollars in weaponry, in aerial defense systems, etc. from the U.S. This coalition does not plan to target ISIS, as the U.S. financed ISIS is a part of the Sunni Caliphate. But the fall of Ramadi has galvanized the Iraqi government. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. We're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. There have been repeated videos, articles, and words directly out of Barack Obama's mouth that the U.S. funds ISIS and routinely drops weapons, ammunition, and food to them. ISIS has been the time bomb for the region a lure to bring dozens of nations into direct conflict. Who showed up after ISIS seized major strongholds in Syria and northern Iraq? Russia and Iran did, because they support Assad, who is directly threatened by ISIS. ISIS is a lure to usher in World War III. Indeed, a sectarian divide is evident in this conflict in the Middle East, with Western countries supporting Sunni actions in the region. On the map here, you can see the dark green markers representing Great Britain, who has a large presence in Jordan as well as the Aegean Sea. Germany has also stationed a naval fleet in the Aegean Sea. French troops have landed in Egypt. They were there to attack ISIS, but suddenly they're not doing that anymore. They've just taken up position in Egypt. Why? Because they're supporting this southern Sunni front that directly opposes Russia and Iran in the region. Israel who is very close allies with Saudi Arabia, is also supporting the Sunni coalition of states planning to attack Bashar al-Assad. In fact, Israel has already attacked Damascus 
multiple times, there is a very real possibility for confrontation between the Sunni front in the South, supported by Western nations, and Iran, who still has planes and troops in Syria. Now, Russia has made a withdrawal, or at least that's what they claim, from Syria, because I think they know it's coming to the region. I think they understand what's about to blow up. The second scenario I call Turkey's Trident Juncture. Turkey is somewhat a dark horse and doesn't have close allies with very many nations in the region. Its government is Sunni, Sunni Muslim, yet it has had rocky relations with other Sunni countries, very rocky relations. Turkey has also had very strained relations with Iran and Russia after they were responsible for downing a Russian plane that didn't violate their airspace. Turkey is one of the largest countries in NATO. It is one of the largest contributors to NATO's military capacities. Please understand that. For example, Turkey contributed the most troops and military equipment to Trident Juncture 2015 military exercise that involved 33 countries. They are indeed a very powerful presence in NATO. Turkey is not doing this by itself. It is under the strategic vision of NATO and what NATO is trying to do in the region. Turkey has also single-handedly allowed millions of Soros migrants to pass through its country without stopping them. Turkey is clearly doing the bidding of the UN in both the migrant crisis and its challenge directly to Russia. And from the words of George Bush, it is a credible United Nations that must have authority and Turkey is being used to reach their goal, control of the Middle East. The United Nations is directly behind this. We have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. A world where the United Nations, freed from Cold War stalemate, is poised to fulfill the historic vision of its founders. When we are successful, and we will be. And they're using Turkey. Their ambition is a new world order. But they need a war first, a very large war with significant depopulation, and Turkey could be a perfect opportunity to confront Russia and Iran right there in Syria and Iraq. The last front that could explode and very soon is in East Asia, specifically in the South China Sea, involving several different countries and in North Korea. North Korea launched ballistic missiles Friday local time, the same week President Obama issued an executive order to enforce some of the strongest sanctions ever imposed by the United Nations. South Korean media reported the missile launches, one of which flew for about 500 miles before splashing down in the sea. U.S. officials confirmed to media outlets a total of two ballistic missiles were fired. Last week, the North Korean regime released images of Kim Jong-un next to what the country said is a miniaturized nuclear weapon, a allegedly capable of being attached to a long-range missile. While everybody brushes off North Korea as making typical threats, there's nothing new here, move on, uh, one must understand that the United States and South Korea carried out the largest exercise in South Korea's history in preparation for an imminent confrontation with North Korea. North Korea has been firing missiles. They've been threatening nuclear strikes. There has been a back and forth war of words between North Korea's Kim Jong-un and Park Geun-hye of South Korea. South Korea has amassed its forces in readiness for confrontation, while Japan is carrying out large military exercises as well because they're right there in the region. 
According to Deagle.com, both of these countries will face large population reduction starting in 2016 through 2025. I think there's a very real threat here for these countries. An equally concerning front is in the South China Sea, where China is in direct confrontation with several countries, including Taiwan, Japan, Philippines, and the United States, India, Vietnam, etc., etc., etc. All the countries in Southeast Asia have carried out recent large-scale military exercises, all of them. Every day, it seems there are hundreds of news articles about rising tensions in the region and the potential for confrontation as China advances to militarize the South China Sea. Despite objections from neighboring countries like Taiwan and the Philippines, there are significant natural resources to be discovered in the South China Sea along with claiming of precious trade routes which China is hell-bent on acquiring. Confrontation could erupt at any moment. Southeast Asia is on the edge. Despite the regions mentioned in this video, there are many, many more areas where the first bomb of World War III could detonate. There are other fronts such as Ukraine, Northern Europe, North Africa, Australia, and an attack on the United States are very real possibilities.